The Raleigh Cigarette Program from Hollywood, starring Red Skelton with Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard and Wonderful Smith. That's our three-piece orchestra. And a stool and a guy sitting there. Sometimes I'm happy. And now we bring you Metro Golden Mayor's newest young comedian, Sometimes the director. star of our show, Red Skelton. Thank you very much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, I feel good tonight. You do, Red, huh? Yeah, today was St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, I know it, Red. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Red. That St. Patrick must have been a terrific guy, you know? Yeah. He drove all the snakes out of Ireland, you know? Yeah, I wonder if he could do anything with the wolves in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Irish sure are a wonderful race. Yeah, eh? I know. Say, are you Irish, Truman? Oh, sure, Red. I'm as Irish as Patty's pig. Yeah, well, how Irish is Patty's pig? <laughs> well, he's the only pig I know who can grunt in Gaelic. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, good old St. Patrick Day, there. Yeah, everybody was wearing something green. Yeah. You were wearing something green, weren't you, Red? Yeah, my face. <laughs> well, what made you sick? That girl I was with. Uh, <laughs> she thought nicking was something to do with giraffes. <laughs> she was pretty bad, wasn't she? Yeah, her face was strictly non-union. <laughs> Say, where did you meet her, anyway? Well, uh, she was standing on a corner waiting for the sunset bus, and I drove up. Ah, uh, love at first sight, huh? Yeah, she looked pretty good to me and my tires looked pretty good to her. <laughs> I got a retread once. <laughs> you got a retread, Ozzy? Yeah, a brain specialist did it. Yeah. Hello, Red. Hello, Harriet. Say, I saw you in the St. Patrick's Day parade. Oh, yeah, I was all in green. Yeah, I'll say you were in green. One guy standing next to me looked at you and your sister walking along, and he says... Gosh, look at the size of that watermelon next to that pickle. Were you in green too, Red? Yeah, I was driving a green car, and I accidentally bumped into a, co a cop on the corner. What'd the cop say? Well, he looked at my green suit and then looked at the car, and he says, Ah, oh, well, boys, will be boys. <laughs> he says, But you do that tomorrow, and I'll beat your ears in. <laughs> I saw your uncle marching in the in the parade, Red. Yeah. Boy, was he high. Yeah, I'll say only three feet below the B-19. <laughs> say, the parade was swell, though. Everything was great until they came to a corner that had a brickyard on one side and a saloon on the other side. <laughs> what happened, Red? In 15 minutes, they changed places. <laughs> and nobody was even puffing. My breath came in short pants <laughs> once. <laughs> Really, Ozzy? Yeah, I was kissing my girl goodnight, and I bent her back further, further, and then something came between us. What was it? The sidewalk. She fell down a manhole. <laughs> Say, you know, I've been thinking. St. Patrick must have had quite a job uh, chasing all the snakes out of Ireland. I was a snake in the grass once. <laughs> you were, Ozzy? What happened? Oh, I gave it up. It was too hard on my stomach. <laughs> Red, I went out on my lawn and picked a shamrock to wear. Did you pick a shamrock from your no, lawn? No, I tried to find a shamrock with four leaves, but all I could get, all I could get was devil grass with horns and a tail. <laughs> you see, I haven't got much grass in my lawn. Why not? I don't know, but every morning a gopher comes out of his hole, looks around, and he says, "I came, I saw, I conquered." <laughs> Well, Red, it was sure a great day for the Irish. Yeah. Uh, did you like that imitation of a gopher? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and every, to top everything off, I threw a party at my house. <laughs> oh, was it open house? No, but it is now. <laughs> I served some Irish punch, too. Irish punch? Yeah. What's that? One drink and you sprout green wings and a harp. <laughs> You know, uh, I don't know what my uncle put in those drinks, but if I ever find out, I got a job with Wheaties forever. <laughs> Say, Red, what was that strange drink you served later in the evening? Oh, did you like that, Harriet? Oh, yes, very much. Well, that's an early American drink. They only sell three bottles to a customer now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Fred, did anything exciting happen? Yeah, we almost had a blackout in the middle of the party. How come? Well, Ozzy found a siren in his Cracker Jack box. <laughs> admit it was a very swanky affair, Ray. Yeah, everybody there was wearing tails, or should have been. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I made one big mistake by inviting Ozzy's musicians. Brother, that's all. Yeah, you know, I never knew people ate like that before. Yeah, when Harriet brought in the midnight snack, what happened? <laughs> well, my dog took one look at the musicians eating, and he went out in the backyard and buried his bones six feet deeper. <laughs> Say, hey, Ozzy, I meant to ask you. I noticed the bass player, uh, fiddle player, was eating uh, soup from uh, from the bowl. He was just drinking it. Didn't didn't you give him a spoon? Oh, sure, but he had that first. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Red, I like the party, but who invited those girls to come? Oh, those were the musicians' girls. They came from quite a distance too. Oh, really? Yeah. I wonder how things are at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> the the I sat next to. <laughs> I sat next to one girl that had big buck teeth, brother, and what buck teeth she had. Every time she smiles, she bisects someone. <laughs> she sounds pretty crummy looking, right? Yeah, I'll say she was crummy. The waiter brushed her off in the ashtray three times. <laughs> say, Harriet, did you enjoy dancing with me? I say, did you enjoy dancing with me? Hold my crutch and I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, come now. I'm not such a bad dancer. I'm a good dancer. I uh, keep talking. Maybe you'll convince your feet. <laughs> <laughs> Did I step on your toes much? Oh, no. You didn't step on my toes. Mm. In fact, all the time we were dancing, you never stepped down off my knees. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was some party, though. I never... I laughed. I thought I'd die. <laughs> I had an uncle died once in a saloon. <laughs> Your uncle died in a saloon? How? He strangled to death trying to wash some potato chips down with popcorn. <laughs> you know, Ozzy's quite a character, isn't he? Yeah, but he's fun at parties. Yeah. Say, so how'd you like the girls he invited? Oh, those were some girls. Where'd he get them from? The Earl Carol Annex? <laughs> oh, what do you mean? I thought they were very nice. Oh, how can you say that? How about the one I was with? What was the matter with her? Oh, it was embarrassing. What do you mean? Well, she had a pinball machine in her bustle. What's embarrassing about that? How would you like to stand around all night handing out change? Tonight, we're going to look in on the barbers of America and see what they have to contend with. In the old days in the West, barber shops were a general meeting place. One of their main attractions was a big bulletin board that carried the latest news. And today, a big sign says, Wanted, dead or alive, dead eye. But mostly dead. <laughs> or, not wanted. <laughs> and at this very moment, across the hot and beastly desert comes none other than dead eye. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, I said! <laughs> I'm sorry there, old horse. I was going to count three. <laughs> but either way, you'd still have been a dead horse. <laughs> Howdy there. Where's Joe the bartender? The well... barber. <laughs> The old day, we had everything in this. <laughs> Where's Joe the barber? Well, dead I, I wouldn't say for sure, but we think he's dead. Dead? What happened? 
Well, uh, remember last week you shot him twice. Yeah, well, I can't remember back more than six murders ago. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, three days later, we buried him. Yeah, well, dig him up. I need a shave. <laughs> hey, where's that other barber, Farnsworth A. Slop? Well, uh, he ain't with us anymore either. He had a little accident. Shot? No. Caught his nose in a roulette wheel and broke his neck. <laughs> Say, whatever happened to old Rattlesnake Hyde used to hang around here? Well, uh, he's in the back room, and is he mad? Yeah, what's eating him? Uh, termites. <laughs> Got a wooden leg. Yeah. <clears throat> Three o'clock and all's well. <laughs> Three o'clock and all's well. Who's that? The town crier. Three o'clock and all's well. Up till now. Well, at the... <laughs> That's what we get for not rehearsing this stuff. <laughs> well, that'll teach him to be a poly, any. Say, uh, partner. Uh, did I? Hey, yeah. Shake your head again. Uh, something moved up there. Okay. <laughs> Well, what do you know? I thought I lost that vulture three days ago. Uh, maybe you thought your bald spot was an egg. Listen, that ain't no bald spot, partner. That's where I scratch my matches. Uh, come on, give me a singe, will you? Uh, let me buy your gun. Okay. There you are. Singe. I meant my hair, not my ears. I bet DuPont loves this program. <laughs> Give me a hot towel, will you? I'll just sit here in this chair and relax. Wrap my face up good in a stove. Well, uh, we're all out of hot towels. How about a warm Kleenex? <laughs> Be kind of soggy, but let me have it. Man of man, did you see that reward they're offering for Captain... Head, Captain Deadeye. Well, uh, n never mind, Wonderful. Uh, uh, the man under this towel wants to shine. Oh, man, I wish I could collect that reward. Now, don't tell me you're interested in that reward money. Well, I didn't take out this debited badge to hold up my pants. Uh, you ain't gonna try and capture Deadeye, are you, Wonderful? I sure am. Well, I already hung bear traps on all the beer kegs in Carson City. Huh. What would you do with that $25,000 reward if you did get it? Nothing. For the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd head straight for that galloping Cube's rendezvous. Mm. Well, aren't you afraid of tackling such a tough customer, Wonderful? Me? Afraid of that no-good outlaw? Why, he's so yellow he'd make a Jap look good. <laughs> If that was possible. <laughs> Good old Dead Eye. He's got the toughest punch in Texas. I got the fastest legs in Texas. Well, of course, you're kidding. Why, no, sir, I ain't. Why, if that Dead Eye was to come in here right now, you know what I would say? No, what would you say? I. Shine, sir? <laughs> yeah, how'd you know I was Dead Eye? Oh, no, you ain't, Mr. Dead Eye. You ain't Dead Eye. I done made a mistake in Diminimity. <laughs> Here's a new word. <laughs> Indemnity? Yes. A mistake, huh? Yes, sir. You ain't dead eye. Why, you don't even look like dead eye. No, sir, you don't even smell like dead eye. Oh, no? Liar. <laughs> I'm worse today than usual. Now, come here. So you're going to turn me in, huh? Oh, I wouldn't do that and live to tell about it. You said it. You know the law of the West. Keep your mouth closed. Oh, I know the law of the West. I was born on the range, and it was mighty hot. Yeah, how come? The pilot light was on. Yeah. Say, uh, Dead Eye, uh, look who's coming over. It's your girl, Calamity Jane. Well, Calamity Jane, what a gal. Nice face, nice figure. Mighty handy with the ice pick, too. Hello, boys. What's cooking? Not me. I'm raw. <laughs> Say, I heard you were over here, Deadeye, and you better hurry and get out of town. There's a posse after you. Posse? What's that? You know, a gang of men who are after that reward. Reward? What's that? That's a price on your head. 
Ed, what's that? I could answer that, but it would only lead to bloodshed. Bloodshed? That I know. <laughs> Come on, gal, how about a kiss, huh? How about a kiss, dead eye? Yeah, I'll count three and then I'll kiss you. You ready? One, two, three. Butter lips. <laughs> Come on, Deadeye. There ain't much time. Why don't you disguise yourself by taking a bath or something? Who, me? Well, then, get a shave. Your face looks like the bottom end of a carpet sweeper. That's a good idea. Hey, Barber, get me my mug and shave me, will you? Okay. Which is your mug? The pewter one? Yeah, I got a pewter mug, you know. Yeah. Sure. You got a pewter mug and a porcelain puss, too. Yeah, it goes rather well with my composition head, don't it? Uh oh, it's too late. Here comes the sheriff now. Uh oh, we're trapped, gal. Come on, we gotta get out of here. What about the barber? He'll squeal. Oh no, he won't. Let me at my shooting iron. Oh no, don't shoot me, Dad. I give me a break. Okay, we'll be fair and square about this. Now I'll count three and then we'll shoot. You ready? One, two, three. He'd have never beat me to the draw anyhow. <laughs> Come on, we'll escape through the back window. Oh, no, you don't. Stand where you is, Mr. Deadeye. Yeah, why? You ain't got no gun. No, but I got a razor. You got me, man. I ain't fighting no razor. Aha, Deadeye. I got him. <laughs> well, Chef, what do you know? I don't know nothing, Deadeye. What do you know? I don't know nothing. What do you know? I don't know nothing. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Uh, nice work there, wonderful. How did you nab him? Oh, you know, uh... Take that razor away from him, Jeff. I'm scared of death for a razor. Uh, you didn't have no right to be scared of my razor, Mr. Deadeye. I didn't? Why not? Couldn't find no place to plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> Then we have the fellow from the country, Clem. He's on his... <laughs> He's on his way to see his girl. She's been planning to give him a haircut for some time. So uh, Clem's finally given in. And we find him slowly walking down the road to his girl's house. Well, you are all I am on my way to see my girl. Oh, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. Do, 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 do. Gee, I want to look nice for Daisy Joan. I guess I better pull my socks up. Mm, sure is tough getting them over my shoes. Gosh, I wish I wouldn't hadn't have worn these long underwear. It keeps creeping up on me. I wonder if he's home. I'll knock on the door. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot we changed that. I ring the bell. <laughs> oh, hi. Hello, Clem. Well, Daisy. <laughs> Stumpy. What you so happy about, Clem? Well, I'm happy because I got Oscar, my pet snake, with me. Clem, I told you not to bring that snake into the house. Well, I like to keep him near me. Besides, he holds my pants up. <laughs> what you doing here, Clem? Well, I thought we'd come I'd come over and we'd play footsies with you. Now, Clem, you be careful what you say. Remember, we ain't married yet. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Gee, you look pretty today, Daisy June. Your cheeks are so nice and rosy. Well, thank you, Clem. Yup, that Mercurochrome sure makes you look good. Well, I'm sorry you can't say the same for you. Just look at your hair. It's awful looking. Why don't you do something about your hair? What do you want me to do, plow it under? Why don't you get a haircut? Well, those vets in town could charge too much. I know, but it's time to cut it. 
I'm tired of looking at you through a fringe. Well, gee whiz, us peeping toms have got to have some protection. Besides, it ain't April. I know, but it's cleanup week. Yeah. Say, I got an idea. What? I'll give you a shave. Yeah. I shaved Pappy, you know. Oh, I know, but he was dying anyway. <laughs> Clem, I'll cut your hair, too. Oh, you going to put a bowl over my head? Well, no. I think with your head, I'll use a funnel. <laughs> you mean my head comes to a point? Yep, in two places. <laughs> Here, let me look at it. Uh, what's just sticking out behind your ear? Nothing. Just some bubble gum I ain't whipped yet. <laughs> Haven't you? Why, thank you, Clem. That's enough. Put it back for the night now. Well, let's go out on the back porch and I'll cut your hair for you. Right. You know, I cut my pappy's hair once. You cut your pappy's hair? Did you do a good job of cutting? Well, sometimes I was cutting hair, but most of the time it was pappy. That's what I'm afraid of. Now sit down and be careful. One of them chairs is about ready to fall apart. <laughs> Was that the chair? Well, it wasn't me. <laughs> I'll trim your eyebrows down, Clem. Okay, take it easy, though. I'll just run my fingers through them once. Oh! It's a fine place to keep your turtle, I must say. <laughs> well, it was only while she was hatching. <laughs> right after that, she goes right back where she belongs, in my hip pocket. <laughs> I think I'll shave you instead. Tell me, do you want soap on your face? Well, what were you going to do? Rub my whiskers off with your knuckles? I'm using that new laundry soap, Clem. I'm saving the wrappers. Yo, thousand wrappers and they send you a new pair of hands. Okay, Daisy June, but remember, you're supposed to soften my whiskers up first. Okay. No, no, with the soap, not by chewing on them. Now, hold still, Clem, and I'll lather you up. Uh, Oh, hey, you flung a hunk of soap right in my mouth. In where, Clem? My mouth, my mouth. Why, Clem, what bubbles? <laughs> now just relax while I strop the razor. No. Wait a minute, you using a straight razor? Ain't you got a safety razor there? Nope, Grandma's got it. What's she doing, shaving with it? Nope, chasing Grandpa with it. Well, I guess she caught him that time. Now, don't you worry about the thing. I'll, I'll strop the razor. All right. <laughs> My, I'm certainly nervous. I just cut the strap right in half. Ain't that a scream? <laughs> no, but this is. Let me out of here. Now, hold still, Clem. I've already got the soap on, so you might as well go through with it. I'll be over in about ten minutes. You'll all be over in ten minutes? Is yes. Yes. Well, don't forget to have me cremated, will you? Now, just sit back and relax. relax. Sit back and think beautiful thoughts. Beautiful thoughts? Yes. Think about someone young and pretty. Okay, I'll think of someone young and pretty. Oh, lona, 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 lona. Clem, what you thinking about? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Now, you hold still, and I'll take a swipe at your jaw. <laughs> Well, what do you know? I missed it a mile. I'll try it again. What are you using, a Jeep? Oh, Jeep, Clem, I think I cut you. Let me see. Oh, well, it's all right. I always wanted a pug nose anyway. You did? Yeah, but you went a little too far. Now it's more pug than nose. Well, shall I try it again, Clem? Yeah, but let's not get nosy this time. Well, here I go. Hey, take it easy. You're going against the grain. Now you're going with the grain. Well, shall I get a blowtorch? Nope. It'd be easy if you didn't have such a lantern jaw, Clem. Have I really got a lantern jaw, Daisy Jewel? Well, sure you have. Ain't it cute the way the light shines through the top of your head? Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, you cut me. How can you tell? Well, I didn't always have this spout at my chin. 
Here, I'll finish it myself. I'll shave my Adam's apples. Now, be careful, Clem. Them Adam's apples are tender. Well, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Care for some fruit salad, my lord? <laughs> that happen in barber shops, we have a lady and her little boy. <laughs> they're, over... they're on their way to the barber shop. So, Harriet, you be my mother and I'll be the mean little kid. Hmm? <laughs> hippity hop, hippity hop. We off, we off to the barber shop. Cut off me hair, cut off my head. Either way, I look like that. <laughs> Junior. Stop kicking that tin can. You'll wear out the tips of your shoes doing that. I already did. I'm working on the meat now. <laughs> oh, Junior, sometimes I wish you'd been twins. I'd let you beat each other black and blue. <laughs> Junior! Now stop kipping, kicking those garbage cans. Why, you want to kick them? <laughs> no, and take that grapefruit off your head. Why'd you take your grapefruit off my head? It's been huge. <laughs> Oh, Junior, you're a bad boy. Yeah, I know. It's that breakfast food that does it. What breakfast food? You know that stuff. You eat three packages and right away you eat an all-American jerk. <laughs> Junior, don't talk like that. Hey, Mommy, why don't you throw me in the river, huh? I would, but I'm afraid it'd scare the fish. Yeah. <laughs> now, you be a good boy and... What's the matter, Mommy? Junior, why is it that every time we pass anyone on the sidewalk, they go screaming off clutching their sides? Search me. Junior, what are you doing with my pincushion? What am I doing with it? Well, why do you think all me little pals call me the slicer? <laughs> oh, look at this bakery shop here. Yum, yum, yum. Well, go ahead and take a look if you want to. Okay. Hey, Mommy, lift me out of your coffee cake, will you? You're not supposed to lean on a glass window. Now she tells you. <laughs> oh, I'll give it to you. Oh, oh you hit me, broke my little neck, you Oh, you hit me, broke my... I didn't touch your neck. <laughs> yes, you did, too. There's the bruise right above the high water mark. <laughs> oh, why do you worry me so much? Well, you worry me, too, Mommy. I worry you. Yeah, every time I do something, I never know whether I'm going to get a whipping or not. <laughs> oh, I wish you were bigger, and then we could slug it out on even terms. <laughs> Mommy, where are you taking me now? I'm taking you to the barber shop. Oh, boy, the barber shop. Maybe if I keep me widow ear dope, I can hear some new risky jokes, huh? <laughs> now, listen, you mind your own business. I'm taking you to the barber shop to have that chewing gum cut out of your hair. Well, I like that experiment. Sort of neutralizes the rest of me. <laughs> you gonna you gonna let him cut me long red curl, dog? No. And anyway, why do you want your long red curls cut off? Because every time I go by the pool room, all the fellas call me Rodo Day. <laughs> well, here's the barber shop. Oh, look at that big stick of peppermint candy. Junior, stop licking that barber pole. Why, my tongue clean. Now listen, I'm going across the street to the beauty parlor, so you go on in the barber shop and wait for me. I want to go with you, Mary. You can't go with me. That's the one place they don't want little boys. That's what you said about the powder room at Gorman's Chinese. <laughs> now you let me go with you or I will tell. You'll tell what? I will tell everybody if you go through Pop's pocket after he falls asleep at night. Junior, I do not go through his pockets. No, you stop in the middle of them and empty them out. <laughs> Another word out of you and I'll... Okay, quit... okay, don't work yourself up, Mommy. Now you go into that barber shop. Okay. Go on. 
Sometimes I wonder why I don't leave home and get a job at Lockheed. <laughs> I sure feel silly. Run around with these long curls, a little boy like me wearing curls. I wonder if I could talk to Barbara into cutting all my hair off. <laughs> it wouldn't take very long. Just a snip here and a snap there. I bet he could do it before Mummy got back, too. If I do, I got a whipping. <laughs> I do this. <laughs> Once and for all, I will put a stop to this hello, little girl stuff. <laughs> hello, Mr. Barber. Oh, hello there, little girl. You see what I mean? <laughs> Listen, I am not a... My good man, there's no truth to that report. I am not a little girl. Oh, you're not, huh? No. Well, so you want a haircut, is that right? Well, I didn't come in here bet on the horses. <laughs> that is today. <laughs> Well, tell me, uh, what kind of a haircut do you want? I want a G.I. haircut. Uh, a G.I. haircut? Uh, yeah. What's that? Well, it looks like a fire break, only more so. <laughs> All right, now. You jump up in the chair, and I'll give you a haircut. Okay. Ah, you have quite a bushy head of hair there. Yeah, from a distance, I look like a victory garden with legs. <laughs> All right, little boy, you're next. Hmm? Mort coming out of the script. <laughs> <laughs> I said... <laughs> What did you say? I say, uh, you're next. Hmm? You're next. No, I'm not. I am junior. Oh, I see. Who is you? I'm disgusted. <laughs> Which one is you, Abbott or Cartello? <laughs> All right, now, what do you want? I got a note here for my mummy for you to cut all me hair off. All right, let's see the note. The note? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, the note. Yeah. The note. <laughs> what did I do with that note? Here's a slingshot. Come to mighty handy to make fat people walk faster. <laughs> here's a water pistol used to put out candles during a blackout. And here's a piece of string with a feet hook on it. Just the thing for snitching donuts. And here's me fog. And here's he lay. <laughs> well, you know, he came apart. <laughs> and a check for a short root beer. <laughs> Well, well, what do you know? No, no. Well, I don't suppose you'd be here unless your mother sent you. That's right. Okay, I'll put this board across the arms of the chair. Nope, boy, that's a twitch, ain't it? Hitting a piece of wood with me. All right, now, upsit daisy. I hit heavier than I look, ain't I? I'll say you are. Tell me, how come you're so heavy? I got a cast on tummy. <laughs> Are you going to serve lunch? Uh, no, why? Well, why are you putting that big bib around me next for? Oh, uh, well, that's so all the hairs won't go down your neck. You well, if they do it, their own fault. <laughs> hey, you can give me a shave, too, while you are. No, you don't need a shave on your face. Not on me face, on me head. What? If I shave your head, you look like a convict. That's all right. I don't want to make my pop feel self-conscious when I go visit him. <laughs> oh, quiet now, and don't wiggle around. Okay. If I were to cut you, I'd drop dead. You really dropped that? Yes, I would. You don't want that to happen now, do you? You don't know me very well, do you? <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, take it easy. I changed my mind. I feel a draft. Well, there's one side off now. Let me see, let me see. Here you are. Gee, I sure look funny, dog. <laughs> I better not go near that pool room. Somebody will bank me in a tight pocket. <laughs> Hey, what's that? What's that? Say, you've got electricity in your hair, you know. Yeah, you mean I wired for sound? <laughs> hey, douse out the light quick. I hear an unidentified plane. No, that's only the electric clippers. Okay. Hey, me head is slipping over to the left. It's nothing at all. That's because I cut the hair off on the other side. Well, tie a balloon on me left ear and straighten me out. <laughs> now then, let's do the other side. Okay. Huh? <laughs> oh, darn it. Hey, can I have that police cadet over there? Now, oh, son, that magazine isn't for you. Oh, it's okay. I'm the junior G-man. That <laughs> <laughs> tickled me with a car. Stop laughing, will you? Ah, <laughs> that tickled me. Stop your laughing. Yeah, I, you better let me enjoy myself now, because when Mummy gets here... Yes? 
Well, what will happen when Mommy gets here? I'll give you three gadgets and they'd all bloodshot. <laughs> now then, here, look at yourself in the mirror. Okay. Well, do you like it? <laughs> What's the matter? Hey, what is you, an Indian? I have been scalped. Put it back. No, you can't put it back once it's been cut off. Now he tells me. <laughs> Did a little boy come in here? Uh, just this one, madam. Oh, that isn't him. My, what a stupid-looking child. <laughs> How do I look, Mommy? Junior, can that be you? Yeah, look, no hair. Oh, but what happened to your head? Scorched earth policy. <laughs> She fainted. You better get some smelling salt. She did out once before, too. She did? Yeah. When was that? The day at the army camp when I kicked that dud bomb. <laughs> Remember, we'll all be back again next Tuesday at the same time. Red Skelton, Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, Wonderful Smith, and your announcer, Truman Bradley. Until next Tuesday, then. This is Red Skelton saying goodbye now. Thanks for listening. Red Skelton is heard on this program through arrangement with the Metro Golden Mayor Studios. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>